This Week in Startups is brought to you by Walker Corporate Law, a boutique law firm specializing in the representation of entrepreneurs. Visit them at walkercorporatelaw.com. And HostGator, your one-stop shop to getting your business online. Your domain name, your website, your website design, and even your marketing, they've got you covered. Have questions? Their team is there 24-7 via chat, phone, and email to help you. Start today with 30% off with coupon code TWIST. One of the biggest problems that we faced as a society, as you know, if you live in California, is water. There's a massive drought going on here, and people, they don't seem to be changing their behavior all that much. And it's a very complex issue, and it's a very, like, charged issue. I've been researching it like crazy. Many of you know I'm talking about it on Twitter constantly. Well, we have a founder on who went through Y Combinator and who's doing a company called Valor Water. Valor Water is doing big science, big data against the water meters in the country. And they've got now hundreds of people, thousands of people, actually, that they're tracking, and they're finding the waste in the system. It turns out that the waste in the system is the easiest thing to fix. There are meters out there that are broken. There are meters out there that are not charging people. There are people who are stealing water, and they help people recoup all that lost revenue from cities, and they just got a client for millions. Additionally, they explain that desalinization is extremely expensive, and she explains all this, and she is brilliant. My God, this founder is so goddamn smart. I'd love this episode. I could have talked to her for two hours. She's brilliant. Stick with us. Great episode, important topic, water. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Jason. And the show is at TWI Startups. This Week in Startups. We do the show twice a week. Thisweekinstartups.com is our website. And you can find us on all the podcasting apps out there. What do we talk about in the show? Startups. If that wasn't incredibly apparent from the name, This Week in Startups. And um, startups are solving a lot of the big problems in the world. We know this. The big problems in the world cannot be solved by governments who are ineffective largely. They can't be solved by universities and professors who are begging for grants. Politicians are ineffective. Nonprofits, don't get me started. But entrepreneurs, ah, entrepreneurs, they do things without permission. And they try to put a dent in the universe and they try to tackle big problems. And today on the program, I have Christine Boyle with us. And Christine Boyle is taking on Perhaps one of the biggest issues of our time. It's a big one. It is. <laughs> yeah. What is it? We are, Valor Water is solving the global water crisis. So you figured out a way to manufacture water. How does this work? I heard this <laughs> H2O. It's got some components. You, so you make H2O. water. That's, that's God's work. Yeah, exactly. That's God's work. So you're not making the water. No, we're not making the water. Okay, what are you doing? We are data scientists. So we apply data science methods to know everything about every drop of water that's pushed through a meter. Got it. So let's talk about those meters. Let's talk about the meters. So there are meters here in California. Yeah. And I heard that somewhere between like half of all the water or 25% of the water is leaking. (laughs) And we're actually losing half the water. Is this true? That... That is an overestimate of, okay. of the problem. I mean, water coming through, the, coming through the urban systems is more efficient than that, but there's still, I want to say, anywhere from 10 to 20% of that water indeed is leaking. Got but it. Not all leaks are bad. Like in the agricultural sector, you'll, lose, you'll leak, but it'll go back and then down to the groundwater aquifer, and it's not a total loss. Right. In an urban system, however, you need to keep that water in the system. Now, why are we losing so much water in our systems? Is it because the pipes are outdated or they never put meters on them? Or wh- why is we this? We are losing water through, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of all those things. You've got water that is simply there's no meter and it's just 
being pumped out into the ether and no one's tracking it. Really? Yeah, you've got broken and old pipes that are busting. You see that in LA all the time on the news. Yeah. Um, you've got old and broken meters, so things are going through the meter that people just don't know what the heck's going on. Hmm. Um, not a lot of, not a lot of innovation in this sector to date. Uh, so the meters that are installed in California, yeah. you're saying a lot of the places where water comes out, there are not meters? It, it happens. Really? Yeah, the governor and the state legislature has required now that all businesses and households be metered, but I think they have till 2020 or so to, to do that, so mm. um, it's still happening. We know Sacramento is not fully metered. Fresno only recently was fully metered, so it's, so it's some, a slow march forward. How do those people pay for water if they're not metered? A flat fee. So at, at your house, Say you're in a place without a meter, you're just going to get a bill for, let's say, 20 bucks, whether you filled your pool or, you know, didn't, didn't, do, didn't even brush your teeth. Really? Yep. It now, happens. what about agriculture? Because it seems to me that, from what I've read, yeah. this is 80% of the water use in California? That's right. Mm -hmm. Did I get that number right? You yeah, know. more or less, yeah. So are they efficient with the use of water? Are they inefficient? And yeah. are you working on that issue as well? Agriculture agriculture is near and dear to my heart. I worked on agriculture for the earlier part of my career. We, Valor Water does not work on agriculture. But a couple of things on agriculture is, A, they're not the most efficient because their water has been really cheap. So anytime mm -hmm. you've got cheap water, you don't have a huge incentive to, to be super efficient with that water. Right. But I would say that growing food is a pretty great use of water. You know, much, much more so than, I don't know, a, a wet and wild water slide park or something like that. So we have to give agriculture the credit where it's due. They're, they're growing the food of America, and it, yeah. it's, it's pretty awesome. So. All right, well, what about these bastards known as the almonds? <laughs> I hear about these walnuts and I these know. goddamn almonds. I know. D Is this me. true the almonds are taking, like, a 1,000 gallons to make tell a pound? Tell me if you have an almond latte in one of your cups before we... Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I hate at this. No, but I mean, some. I don't know if people were realizing this, yeah. but like the almonds were taking a thousand gallons of water or a hundred gallons for an almond. Is it true? I don't know the exact amount of water per almond. Right. But water almond trees and a lot of nut trees are fairly water intensive. I, I get that. I think uh, you know Jerry Brown's talked about this a lot too. On the other hand, this is America. If you want to grow some trees on your land. It's pretty hard sometimes for the government to come in and tell you what, what kind of tree you can grow. But we can tell you what you pay for water <laughs> yeah, and so that we can incentivize right. you that way. Exactly. So let me see yeah. your solution here. How long okay. have you been working on Valor Water? And you can check out Valor Water, V-A-L-O-R. V-A-L-O-R. Valor. Valor. ValorWater.com. Valor Great name. Valor is the courage to take on and solve a huge problem, and that's what we're doing at Valor. Okay. So Valor Water uh, was born out of my graduate work at University of North Carolina. Okay. I got my hands on millions and millions and millions of water billing records and worked with water utilities throughout the Southeast mm. during their drought that they had in the 2007, 2008. And I worked with a team and we started just applying data science methods to understand everything that associated with, with meters and water use Got and it. develop business cases around that. So I'm going to show you. We, Valor Water, that started in 2007. The company launched in late 2013. What did you learn during that study? Was there something that popped out that you said, oh, my God, look at this smoking gun? Jason, so many things popped out. Take, take me to the, to the top <laughs> one, two, or three. So here's something interesting. It's, it has to do with your, your, leak, your leak problem that we're mm. talking about. We found that 2.3% of meters were failing to collect revenue for the water that they were selling. I mean, that means what? you're selling the water and you're not collecting the money. So That's a the big meter problem. was ticking off. Sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. Ah. Sometimes people were stealing water. Sometimes really? there was some kind of um, dying meter where it just wasn't calibrated properly, all these mm. things. So that's that translated into often... The, what we found working with 10 utilities to date is we found $13 million that they've failed to collect for water that they've delivered. $13 million in Among, failed collection. Money. Across eight utilities. Wow. Yeah. In a short period of time. In a short period of time. So 2%, they're not even collecting the money. Yeah. So those people are not getting the proper the price signal. feedback. Mm -hmm. The price signal. Yes, yeah. thank you. Perfect yep. way to say it. So they're not getting yep. the price signal. Yep. Um, and then 
how come we don't actually get live feedback from our meters? Like, I, I, I should be getting a text message or an email when my water usage is outside the norm. I should be getting, I should know, hey, today you use this amount of water, yeah. every day you use this. Why is it not smart, like my watch or my phone? Because everyone doesn't have Valor Water yet. Got it. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Perfect tee up. Show me the product. Okay. Yeah. So this Got is it. the head and revenue. So this is the how we're solving that problem. Got it of utilities failing to collect revenue on meters. Mm. This means, what this translates into for you and I is deferred rate increases because mm. they're just collecting the right amount of revenue. Mm. It translates into the right price signal being sent and often to utilities being able to reinvest, which is really important. So we have identified to date um, eight, or let's see, what are we here? Seven different algorithms mm -hmm. and data science methods to help utilities find uh, find a the leak. hidden revenue, a leak, all right. these things. So it's real. This is a, just real simple interface. You're able to see exactly all the meters for this month, the certainty and probability. Like a meter wasn't working, a faulty yeah. meter, a couple of different uh, common ways that people could go. That's right. And then we're yeah. able to put a dollar sign on it so that that utility will understand exactly how much money they're missing so they can prioritize their workflow. Go out there. Yeah. Um, you can go to, and grab and basically just make yourself. Wow, ask. look at that. Revenue missing from that meter, $713. For that for that month. For that month. It could be for that month. Wow. Yeah. So there are people who could be, you, you could be losing in excess of $10,000 for one meter a year. Yes, sir. Wow. And we've got eight of these data science algorithms. So an aggregate, you're looking at often in the seven figures per, per year. Yeah. Not insignificant. Not insignificant. These meters are made, um, how, how old are these meters typically that are installed? And are they on like 3G connections? Or how do they get their data back to the central base? There, it, it depends. Some of the, I mean, meter, people are doing new meter replacement all the time. So even within a utility district, you could have the most up-to-date meters and the most decrepit meters because they're on a replacement schedule. Yeah. They have a little thing on top of them called advanced meter infrastructure in the most modern of cases that's sending over the cellular line data. Got In it. the most non-modern of cases, it's Little Miss Meter Maid out there wow. checking the meter. Yeah. And yeah. We, we, we had ours all swapped out in LA back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Um, how much does it cost to swap out one of these meters and put in the state-of-the-art one? Uh, it's going to be, it could be around from five to $800 per meter. That sounds extra ridiculous. It's a lot. It's a lot. Are, what does it actually cost to make one of those meters? It must cost like $25 or a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's the meter. There's some technology involved. So what's cool about Valor is that we help leverage the ROI on mm. that meter. So Got it. If, if, the, if the meter company is saying, hey, we want to sell you this Cadillac of meters, they actually really are bad at making software. So that's where Valor's really seen the success is we mm. can come in and say both to the meter manufacturer and to mm. the, um, the I mean, utility, the utility yeah. saying, hey, you're making this investment. They've told you a few things you can do with all this data. Here's what we can help you do with this data that's really going to push the ball forward on on, on helping you be a more strong utility. So you're a tiny company. How do yeah. you get the municipalities to embrace this? Is there a business model here? You charge them for software? Do yeah. you do you have a business model where you say, hey, whatever you recoup, we'll split with you? And well, we, What's the model here? The model is just straight up SaaS model right Got now. It. So we have five modules. You pay a fee per meter per module per month. We are looking ahead to what you referred to as like a risk shared model. Mm. We're a little bit too young to do that, but we, we've quantified that annually per year in the U.S., $8.7 billion dollars is failing to be collected. Wow. And Valor is excited to to solve the problem and share in 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 the the proceeds of that. All right, when we yeah. get back from commercial break, uh, okay. I want to talk about how many municipalities have actually installed it and yeah. what it's going to take to get this installed everywhere and what are the chances that we have like a cataclysmic a drought in the coming years on this week in Stern. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Let me stop for a moment this amazing episode and tell you about the Walker Corporate Law Group. Yes, they are a boutique law firm that specializes in the representation of entrepreneurs and startups. And 
Scott Walker is the founder of that company, and he is a personal friend of mine, and he does a great job working with startups. I have literally introduced him to dozens, maybe hundreds now, of startups, and they all rave about the services of the Walker Corporate Law Group because their lawyers have decades of experience. You're not gonna get junior associates who are getting on-the-job training with your startup, no. They're gonna help you with mergers and acquisitions, licensing, terms of service, privacy policies, formation, all this kind of stuff, fundraising, and they're really great at it and they do fixed fees. They don't want to surprise people with crazy, crazy bills. They think that billable hours can reward inefficiency, so they'll just be fair with you. And that's what I love about them, because if you're a startup, you don't want to get that sticker shock and get a huge, huge bill, make sure you use the Walker Corporate Law Group, and you can do that by calling Scott Walker at 415-979-9998. 415-979-9998. You can email him, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com, or you can visit Walker Corporate Law dot com as well. Scott at WalkerCorporateLaw.com and let Scott Ed Walker on Twitter know, at Scott Ed Walker, know that you, hey, you watch the program and you appreciate him supporting independent media like This Week in Startups. One of my oldest advertisers, one of my oldest friends in the industry, just a great guy, a total mensch, and he really takes care of the startups who work with him. Thank you, Scott Walker, for supporting This Week in Startups. Bye-bye. Okay, let's get back to this program. Come on. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis. And today on the program, Christine Boyle, who is which with Valor Water Analytics. You can check them out at ValorWater, V-A-L-O-R, water.com, and their Valor Water on the Twitter. Um, when we left, I was asking, oh, and you went to Tummel in YC. I did, wow. I did Tummel and YC. So you're doing 15. a little of that incubator hopping I oh, hear yeah. about. Oh, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> um, and you raised a little bit of money, quarter million bucks. Yep. And you're going to raise a little more maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, five employees. Five employees. And you're a data science nerd. Data, I'm a water economist and a data science nerd. And you decided to be an entrepreneur instead of just working for like some big NGO or government agency. Oh, heck yeah. I yeah. had an entrepreneur in my blood. Couldn't Very get good. away from it. Um, so... What are the chances, since you know so much about water, that we're going to have some sort of cataclysmic event? Because I have to say, when I was growing up in New York and we had yeah. the droughts in the 80s, yeah. in the 70s and the 80s, you were told to not flush the toilet. That's gross, Jason. And it, but it, they had commercials on TV. <laughs> if it's yellow, let it mellow. Okay. You know, da, 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 da. And you were told not to water your lawn. And there yeah. were people driving around closing hydrants when we opened them up in Brooklyn. Yep. It was taken very seriously. Yeah. And here in California, we're hearing about this cataclysmic drought yeah. for year after year of this is the worst drought ever. Yeah. And nobody is changing the goddamn behavior. No, I see people who are watering their concrete. It's, it's, They're cleaning their concrete with hoses. It's shameful. It it's really is. It's crazy and yeah. shameful. Yeah. And nobody seems to be in charge of this state. What... How bad is the drought that we're in right now, realistically? Because I feel yeah. like I'm not being told the truth, because if it was this bad, wouldn't Where do they you, be having people going around giving fines? Where do you live? Which city? Uh, uh, Los Angeles and uh, San Francisco. Okay. Just wanted to, because I know these different districts. Um, yeah. So in Brentwood. In Brentwood, yeah. In Los Angeles, it was ridiculous People were still washing their cars. I know. People have these incredibly lush lawns. People have pools. I know. Literally, nobody's changing behavior. So we have another tool that 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 sends messages. So the idea is like kind of the big vision for us is that we Valor Water knows what you're doing with water. Mm -hmm. We know what's going on in your meter. We also can analyze your consumption patterns and tell your household, Mr. Jason and family, yeah. what's going on and send you a message, a text message, a note, whatever, and 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 have this be more of an interactive feedback. We might also send you a nice note that says, hey man, nice good job. job. Way to go. You've done it. Um, so this is this is the new wave, and this is the wave that, that Valor is part of. If you can measure it, you can manage it. If you can uh, measure it, you can manage it. I have to say, though, when it comes to the cataclysmic drought and what's happening, we have models. We have Israel, Singapore, Australia. People have done it and survived. And the re reason they've survived is because a drought is fundamentally a people problem. Okay, explain. And the people problem is that we're really adaptable people. If there's a little bit of water, we can adapt to it. Um, 
and the but the management here in this state is, is pretty broken. Mm. There's so much inefficiency in the system, and there's yeah. so many mixed messages with like especially with price signal. Um, and what is the price signal? What does it cost for water here in California? And how do they charge us? And how do they change the price? Because I, I never saw a commercial or a news story that said, by the way, the drought is at this level. Yeah. The price is now X. If the drought gets to, drought gets to this level, the price is going to be X times 1.5. It, it, that's the way it works, though. That is the way it works. It is working that way. Yeah. What do people pay for a gallon of water? It's like a, a, a fraction of a penny? Yeah, it's going to be like for a gallon. I mean, for a thousand gallons, it's going to be five bucks, something like that. So, so go it's up so from cheap, there. nobody it's would so ever cheap. care. What does an average household with a couple of people in it use? So, Put average household, a lawn do, you a do you have a lawn? It's a micro lawn. Okay. So, average, average use is. You could think about it like 5,000 gallons a month, or here in San Francisco, you think about it as gallons per capita per day. It's like 50 gallons per capita per day. Got it. So if San Francisco is very efficient. LA is not. But then what's happening now, they built that giant D cell down in San Diego, so we are going to start taking water from the sea and doing those sorts of things. Now, talk to me about desalinization. Yeah. Okay. It costs uh, a tenth of a penny per gallon or something in this range. Gosh. I don't know my It's an energy on issue. Yeah, it's an energy issue. Is it? Because they built this huge one in Santa Barbara, I understand. Yeah, and they And they shut it down. It. Yeah, it's too expensive. And now they're firing it back up. Yeah. So it's going to cost $10 million or $20 million to fire it up? At least, yeah. What is the state of desalinization? Because it seems like we took a couple of decade break off from it and yeah. mothballed all this stuff. Yeah. Is it gotten much more efficient? Thanks to things like nanotechnology or solar powering it. Yeah. What's the story with desalinization? Desal. So for desal, it's all about the membrane. That's the technology that people are working on. Is uh -huh. the membrane because the membrane is what determines the level of energy that it's going to take to Got pull it. the salt from the from the ah, water. I see. My thing with desal is that you've. We know that there's a lot of waste happening in the system, uh. and you know tools like Valor are much cheaper to go in. They are, right? <laughs> yeah, to go in and, and get you to you know replace your turf or figure out your leaky leaky fire hydrant and fix things. It's a mu it's like orders and orders of magnitude cheaper to do conservation and process efficiency before you go out and start dredging the ocean to to create desal. And there is some danger to dredging the ocean in that you're going to yeah. suck up. In little, this process, little fishies and eggs. God bless those little fishies and eggs. It's yep. a disaster because if yeah. you start effing with the bottom of the food chain, yeah, it's not whoa. good. Whoa. Yeah, and the you know those companies doing something to address it. The ones that are running those public-private partnerships. So there's a lot of big dogs involved in mm. what's going on. But sounds like a lot of backdoor <laughs> revenue potential. It's, yeah, there. but it's a very expensive last resort option. Got it. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, where are you at in terms of deploying your solution? So we, we piloted with, we're licensed technology of University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we piloted there with 12 utilities. Um, got everything running, vetted everything. Yep. We moved to California. I moved to California and started the company. Um, we're on the ground here with two water utilities in California, and we just signed a deal to deploy to a national water utility on three million meters. Wow. Yeah. Huge. So, yeah. And what is it, a dollar per meter per year, per month, something in that range? Roughly, yeah. What, per month? No, per it's, a, it's more than a dollar per year. Oh, great. Yeah. So a, this is a multi-million dollar contract per deal. year. Yeah. So you get that locked down, yeah. you're going to go from five to 50 people. That, absolutely. We're Congratulations. excited about that. Huge. But yeah. it took you how many years to lock down that big fish of a contract? You know, that one... It's funny. I've been chasing a lot of small fish and big fish, mm -hmm. and this big fish, it took about eight months. Eight months. Yeah. So that's a pretty short cycle for yeah, it's a, not bad. for a government agency. It's not a government agency. Oh, it's sorry. A, it's a private water. A supplier. private water supply, right? Yeah. Um, so that then that sounds like about average for a big company. Yeah. And they look at this and just say, "Hey, we're going to be able to re we'll be able to make this money back." The easily. ROI our ROI on this tool, the minimum ROI we've had is sixty two percent. The maximum was over two thousand percent. Wow. So it pays for it itself. It prints money. Yeah, it prints money. It literally prints money. Um, what would it cost? to fix all the meters in the country <laughs> and get there. Like, I mean, ah, I think I there's see. like 70 or 80,000 domiciles in the United in the United States. You know how many How many? 
are there 70, 80? Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's households. That means there's a magnitude more actual homes because people own two homes, yeah. et cetera. So I think there's like 70 or 80 million households. 70, 80 million households. What is the number of what is the number of meters in the country? Is there any estimate to that? No, and we've tried to get that number from the meter companies themselves. They don't even know. Wow. Um, I, you so know, this whole thing is like we don't even have basic metrics. It's 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 an archaic sector, and that's what you know. Some talking to different folks around the okay, this is a technology is exciting. I think the things that are exciting is that the time is now for this stuff. There's urgency around climate. There's urgency around the revenue losses and hits that the utilities are taking from conservation. Mm. There's also a, a change of guard. The, the old the old dogs are kind of slowly retiring, and there's a whole new fleet of folks entering and, and running these systems. And mm. that's why there's so much excitement for doing for these types of tools that we're creating. Is part of the problem that some of the utility companies they're privately owned, mm -hmm. they're not incented to limit consumption because they get paid based on consumption. It's not even, it's the same with public. I mean, the-, the Okay, their, for the public. Their enterprise run, they, they're, they're having a hard time with this, yeah. Because if they get people to conserve electricity- They lose money. They lose money. Yeah, it's the same with water. And the same with water. So yep. we have this perverse backward system. Yep. We need to pay them to get smaller. So if they yeah. eliminate jobs and eliminate the consumption, we give them more money. That And that's, I mean, you, you're explaining my business perfectly, Jason, because we're saying, okay, you're going to lose a few employees due to retirement. Well, here, instead of replacing all 10 of them, let's replace it with four smart, really smart, top-notch professionals and then bring in some technology that's going to help it. recoup that, that ROI and get you just leaner, more process efficient, so keep rates down, keep the water flowing. Um, and that's yeah. where we see this, this wave. Uh, you've seen the movie Chinatown. Yes, I have. Uh, does the water industry have elements of backdoor dealing corruption that we would all be shocked if we found out about? Do you think? I it's a I find I don't think there's a lot of corruption. I think that that the water utility folks that I work with are amazing public stewards. Got this, it. They're they're, they're in it for the notch. right reason. Yeah, they're in it. They are they're working their butts off, they're doing their thing, they're yeah. excited about it, they're, they have a mission to their work. You know, when, whenever you see billion dollar price tags on things, such as a lot of the infrastructure pro, um, projects, you get some funny business. Yeah, because um, people are like, hey, if I'm gonna get a billion dollars, let's chop it up and I take 10% of it yeah, to build the desalinization but, plans. You know, the FBI, which is, is is got its nose in all kinds of stuff around this state. So they're trying, really? to, they're trying to keep things on the up and up. That's fascinating. Oh yeah. All right, when we get back from commercial break, we're gonna keep going and talk a little bit about the FBI involved in our water. That's <laughs> fascinating. Now we're getting some interesting turns yeah. on this week in startups. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Let me stop for a moment and tell you about HostGator. You can stop thinking about the business you want to do, and you can just do it. The first step is web hosting and a domain name from our friends at HostGator.com. It's a one-stop shop for your online business. You can set up WordPress, drag and drop builders, easily set up custom email addresses. They have in-house design, SEO, and PPC, pay-per-click services. So as you grow, you'll be able to easily transfer from your $4 a month shared hosting account and you'll have dedicated services, VPS, all that great stuff, 24-7, 365 day a year, live support via chat, phone, or email. We love them so much that Twist is hosted with them. That's right. It's super affordable compared to things like Amazon. They have reliable service, um, and we've had a really great experience with them. It's super quick to get set up, and everything is clearly explained um, and very nice and neat with screenshots and everything. The first 100 Twist listeners that sign up with the promo code TWIST25 will receive one year of HostGator hosting package for just $25. That's right, TWIST25, and you will receive the one year of the HostGator hatchling package for just $25. This includes tons of disk space, unmetered bandwidth, MySQL databases, and multiple custom email accounts. So don't worry, if you're not one of the first 100, you can still save 30% using the promo code TWIST. Thanks again to our friends at HostGator for hosting This Week in Startups.com and for providing all this great service to our listeners. Go ahead and thank at HostGator on your Twitter handle. Okay, thanks again, HostGator. Let's get back to this amazing program. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. And boy, do I have an exciting announcement that I'm going to make right now. It's a little bit premature. However, 
our friends at IBM, they run this incredible program. Of course, you've all heard of it, Smart Camp, if you haven't. They basically have dozens of cities around the world run essentially what are like little demo startup competitions. They came to me last year. They saw the launch festival. We had a great time. We've been hanging out, having drinks, talking. IBM's a big company. Launch is a 10-person company. They said, hey, Jason, what you do at Launch Festival, what your team does is amazing. This weekend startup's amazing. How about we partner on Smart Camp? I said, IBM wants to partner with me? IBM, really? My first computer, the IBM PC Junior, my favorite laptop of all time, the ThinkPad. I love this company. Of course I would love to partner with IBM. So we're doing Smart Camp with them. The prize is going to be if you win the 30-city competition, IBM and launches Smart Camp, huh? Co-branding. How great is my life, right? Can you imagine I got here in my life that I'm partnering with IBM? I pinch myself sometimes. This is my life, really? IBM, huge company, hugely successful. The winner across these 30, the top 10 are going to come to the launch festival. The top three will be on stage. And I am going to invest $25,000 in the top one, and I'm going to let them into my launch incubator, which has less than a 2% acceptance rate, which, by the way, is a little bit less than one combinator. It's not a competition between Sam and I or anything. <laughs> We're not going to say it's a competition in any way, but it's a little bit more elite. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and so if you want more information, it's a brand new thing. Go to smartcamp2015.com, smartcamp2015.com. Y Common is a great program, too. But we have this huge partnership with IBM. Couldn't be prouder. And um, it's going to mean that maybe 60 companies, or 40 to 60 companies will make it to the, to, the, to the first round of the finals across these 30 cities. And everybody's going to come to the launch festival. It's going to be fantastic. So if you want to uh, participate on a global basis, go to Smart Camp 2015. On the program today, Christine Boyle, who, boy, I am so glad to have you on the program because I am so up in arms about this water stuff. It's, it's, and I'm so stupid crisis. about it. It's okay. I don't know anything about it. You're going to Smart Camp. We're going to figure it all out. Well, Smart Camp it out. I love it. Yeah. Good callback. Good callback. <laughs> um, have you done any broadcasting before? That's good. First time. Uh, first time. You're doing good. Um, so the water situation is part environmental. Mm -hmm. It's part measurement and technology and management. You got it. And perverse incentives or reverse. I shouldn't even say perverse. Reverse incentives. It is reverse. Reverse yeah. incentives. Yeah. What are the, uh, obviously Valor Water is like the no-brainer, right? Yeah. That's the no-brainer. We have to have big data on this problem. We have to measure it so we can management, manage it. But what are the other things in water technology that you're seeing, just veering outside of yeah. what you're doing with Valor? Um, are people collecting gray water or mm. people doing, um, what is it called when you uh, take the water out of the air? Condensation? Oh, or? I haven't seen a lot of that. I, I read about that years ago, that yeah. that was going to be some big thing. We're all going to have these yeah. condensation things on our roofs. It sounds crazy to me. Yeah. Because the air, then the air, if everybody did that, would the air be dry? What, yeah. Oh, should we be in a full-scale panic about water here in the United States and on a global basis? Because I have people who are coming to me with Charity Water yeah. and all these water people, water.org. They've got me in a panic about water. Water.org, that's another UNC company. So love, yeah. love Gary and his group. Should we be absolutely in a panic about clean water here in the United States? Should civilians be worried about it? Or are we going to get through this? I think, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Okay. Because we just haven't hit the crisis point yet. Like California mm. is almost there. We're, we're getting, everyone's just looking at the clouds in the sky and that big ball out on the Pacific being like, is it going to rain this winter? Is it going to snow? Right. We're just waiting because what we've seen, we've seen other people where, can I curse on this show? You certainly fucking can. Okay. And if you if you do, <laughs> you're just going to have to get bleeped. So you just create a little bit of work for the engineers. Okay. I don't give a shit. All right. So, so. We, we've seen shit hit the fan right. in other places. And technology, efficiency, and just friggin' human innovation, which mm -hmm. is what you and I both love mm -hmm. through technology, has helped solve it. I mean, right. you, like Israel and Australia just cut the course. What, what happened in Israel? They desalinized like crazy there, They right? desalinized, but they also, they charge you through the friggin' gazoo. If you, if you go there and you wash your vegetables and brush your teeth and do everything, everyone's just reusing water all the time. Like, people are taking Navy showers and using water. Navy shower defined as three minutes in the shower, five minutes in the shower. What's the proper shower length? Three. Three? Yeah. Whoop. Real quick. Wow. Yeah. Just the important parts. You really? Get, get on with it. Yeah. I see. This is going to be a problem for me. <laughs> so, so the thing is, is that the, we're, these we're new super... shower heads are killing it, aren't they? These I new, know. like, oh, you're going to be in a downpouring in the waterfall. Oh, you know those waterfall just... shower heads? Yeah. I'm not. I mean, I'm from Seattle. I, I'll, I'll go up there just to like, 
you know. No, Seattle has no water problem, right? It's just they're, they're, they're. Yeah, it's it's like water world up there. Okay, so I don't mean to go all. Um, who was the person who was saying they could solve the water problem by building? Somebody, like, one of these Donald Trump people, oh, it was William Shatner, oh. was like, oh, well, why don't we just build down the five a big, huge pipe. Oh, and pipe all the water Pipe all the water from Canada to yeah. here, because we're thinking about doing that for oil. And yeah. I said, well, thanks, William Shatner. We're all looking to you for advice. I mean, <laughs> guy's a bit of a disaster. But it, I thought about it, and I was like, well, I guess a pipe from Canada wouldn't be such a bad idea, because they have more water than they know what to do with, correct? They got a lot of water. Would that work? No. No? Why would you do that when everyone, the thing is, is like water is very local. Right. You got to deal with it locally. Right. You can't, it's too expensive to do that. When, I mean, we're all Americans, we're gluttonous pig people when it comes right. to water. Right. So like, why don't we just get our act together yeah. and use water okay. more efficiently and fix the leaks got it. and do everything in our own little system before we get out and get, you don't have to get all crazy about everything What here. is the price in California yeah. that water should be that would drive people to actually start conserving? Because my perception right now is nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's true. We agree on that. I, I totally agree. And so $5 why, per thousand is not enough. Would no. it be 25 or 50? What's the breaking cost? $5 a gallon gasoline? Well, so what you do is basically you have to have like a lifeline rate. Basically, because if you're, if you're, you want to be incentivized to use water efficiently. So you uh, basically, like you first set a, X a, gallons free. Well, or just minimal. Got it. That you're, you know, that you're. It's a minimus. It's a water budget where, hey, if you, if you use up to this amount, good job, good for you. Your water is going to be affordable. Got but it. But the second you go above that. What's that number? That number. I'm going to say per person, whatever. Yeah, 25, 25 to 40 bucks per thousand gallons. Got it. Um, is, and that's going to be, that's going to make you face a multi, multi hundred dollar water bill on a monthly basis. Right. If it doesn't break a hundred dollars, nobody pays attention. Nobody your pays cell, attention. It's got to be more than your cell phone. It, or your cable or and your all cable. this stuff. But the thing is, is that you do have to protect, water is a, a Basic right human rights. that people need to have. So you, right. you need to have an amount that people can have affordable water if they use it in a conscientious way. Right. So Other, the first 1,000 gallons, 5 bucks. Well, Next we'll thousand. give it more than 1,000. First 4,000 gallons. $5. Yeah. But the 5,000, then, then you're at 25. That's right. So it's this, Next, it's this, the 6,000. Yeah. It's, you know what it's got to be like? Tell me. In the NBA, the salary cap was kind of a joke for a while. So yeah. like teams like Lakers and Knicks were like, well, whatever. Yeah. Because they just charged them every dollar above the salary cap, you pay two. Right. And they're like, well, who cares? Yeah, like, we don't care about Yeah, that. so we're $10 million over, we pay 20 but it's a billion-dollar franchise, who cares? Yeah. Then what they started doing was saying, the first $5 million over the cap, you pay double. The next five, you pay triple. The next five, you pay quadruple. Yeah, you got and it. so then what happened was somebody who was 15 k over, that $15, $15 million a year, one contract that you went over, right. it could cost you $50 million. You're like, let's get exponential about this stuff. It's got to get exponential. Yeah. I agree. Um, we see that happening. It's happening here. There are nine utilities in California that have really strict water budgeting. Mm. So we see that as a trend. Valor Water is creating models and calculators to help propel this trend. The thing is that's funny that happened when the, during the Nest deal, though. We saw with Nest that all of a sudden there was this hypothesis that people like you and I really cared about what the heck was going on with our, with our AC and HVAC and stuff. Yeah. Do we? Do we really care? I mean, I think I no. saw this whole trend coming out of everyone having all their water information on their phone and everything. This is one of the trends you're asked about. No one freaking cared. So, so when you have the measurement, yeah. it's nice, but it doesn't drive behavior in the same way financials do. Yeah, so it's You true. need to have the financial incentive. Yeah. But measuring can help. It can help. And people do want to understand what they're doing, how they're changing, if they're... Uh, you know, the example I give yeah. is like with my pool in L.A., when I you have, have a, a pool in LA. I did. Tisk, I mean, tisk. I just sold my house. Okay. Um, or literally, it's in contract right now. <laughs> Very sad about it in a way, but it's also like it's a huge pool. Yeah. When I first moved in, I had a house guest who stayed in my pool house for a month. Uh -huh. He kept the pool on 90, Ooh. 85, 90, because he liked Nick liked to swim in the warm temperatures. Sure. No pool covers. Old school pool. No yeah. way. To no way to have a pool cover. I got the first gas bill. How much? It's like fourteen hundred dollars. I mean, twenty four in LA, it goes to fifty at night. Yeah. So at fifty at night, he left it on. It's going to eighty five. I didn't know. You're a I'm, nice. I'm host. a New Yorker who came out to out California. I'm getting a fourteen hundred dollar gas bill. I was like, oh my god. So then, what you know, I did is I installed the Wi-Fi enabled one. Yeah. And then I set it, and I could look on my phone, but it didn't yeah. even have the alerts and like. 
it needs to have that sleep function where if like to turn off the water at a certain point or yeah. turn off the well, usage of it. For technology wise, we see a lot of that when it comes to irrigation. We're doing a lot with evapotranspiration data now so that... Whoa, whoa, what's that word mean? Sorry. It's basically weather English data. English only on sorry. the program, please. Um, weather data. Okay, weather say data. it again. What is it called? Evapotranspiration data. Evapotranspir... It's the rate at which... which it's the rate at which... Um, the water leaves the earth? The water leaves the earth, yeah. Got it. okay. So if you have an evapotranspiration sensor in your dirt, when when it ah. rains, it's not going to turn your... Your sprinkler system won't come on. That was the problem I had in LA constantly. I was going <laughs> mental over this, which was every morning this thing yeah. would go off. And if it was raining... Yeah. When I, because I never had any of this in Brooklyn. No, you, yeah. I came out and all of a sudden it's raining outside and the sprinklers are. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Why does that happen? It's not smart. So we're getting smarter. And we're yeah. doing water billing now. Another product we have uses that evapotranspiration data so that you're going to get penalized if you watered your house and your lawn mm. and it was raining, you're in oh, trouble. Oh, genius. You're in trouble. That's genius. Mm -hmm. See, that's the kind of penalty you should get. Yeah. Now, what about this? I heard that uh, my sister-in-law, I think, was doing this. Um, they put a big bucket in their backyard. Oh, I love that. And they fill it with water. Oh, they fill it with rainwater? Rainwater. Uh, yeah. And then it's with weight. They can turn on this hose. They have a hose attached to it, I guess. I love it. And then they just water their garden with that. I think that's fantastic, except for it doesn't rain anymore. Right, so that's it's a, a bit of a problem. Yeah, it, it's cool. Those are big rain barrels. I think they're amazing. But if it doesn't rain, that's a problem with a lot of the technologies here that they're building in the city of San Francisco right now is they're dependent on rain, rain. capture. <laughs> and it's really cool. If you capture the rain, you can reuse it. You can do all this stuff, but it's got to rain. Yeah. So. Interesting. It's a, Yeah. Has anybody, this is, I was thinking about this, and actually I was interested, I was talking to name dropping i was talking to elon musk about it well hey and i was like hey elon you do the solar stuff like yeah. what do you think about the thing he's like i got a lot of things on my plate i can't think about what right now i gotta that. get a rocket ship up but i was thinking like with all the solar yeah that's now getting so cheap could we not take uh build a pipe up to the top of the mountains where it's ice cold right yeah and then build on top of the pipe solar panels the whole way right yeah. so you get one right away then you desalinize the with ocean sol with solar power, and you just flow the water up to the where it's cold, and you rebuild the ice caps so that we create the natural melting of the ice caps in the spring. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that idea in my like wild water idea box. That's that that's my water world type of idea. Because <laughs> it would seem to me if you set that up, once you set it up, it's kind of like set it and forget it. It's just every day it's putting some trickle up there. Freezing yeah. it and then it doesn't disturb the. Net. All right, I'll put that in my wild anyway. water idea box. I like. There's it. a lot of these crazy ideas. There's I guess. a lot of crazy ideas, um, but I think for me personally, yeah. I'll take all those ideas all day long because mm. the water world has been kind of ignored technologically for a long time. Yeah. So the fact that people like me founding this company and yeah. other people that just are caring and putting their investment of thought and talent into water, mm. it's amazing. It's time. So, Is there going to be some crazy transformational way to clean water um, or to extract water? Like, is there a technology that 20 years from now will just make water, clean water so freely available we wouldn't have to worry about metering? Is there anything on the agenda? Well, there is, yeah, and they're doing it in Orange County right now. The whole, like, do you know about the whole toilet no. to tap thing? No. Wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> I think you just said toilet to tap. I did. <laughs> you don't know about that. Have I don't you, know Have about you spent it. any time in Orange County? I, I've driven through Orange County, and I tend to go about 10 miles per hour faster so I can get to San Diego and Laguna quicker. I don't want to stop in Orange County because there's a lot of Republicans there. There are, and they're, yeah. drinking, they're drinking desalinated toilet water. Get out of here. I'm serious. Oh, wait. I know what you're talking Is this the thing Bill Gates drank? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I oh. drink it too. I've been to that plant. Yeah, we've all took a sip of the water. So that's that's the kind of technology. It's this closed loop system where you're reusing all different kinds of whether it's um, black Omni water, pressure. gray water that you're. But it takes energy to do it. It's going through multiple processes of uh, desal and radiation and stuff. But so they radiate to kill all the bacteria. Mm -hmm. They filter it. They, they filter desal it. They desal it. it. They spin it, maybe. Who knows? They do. And then they actually put it into an aquifer for, and actually mix it with muddy water only for 
so humans feel better about drinking it because they want it to go underground, go through some natural processes. But that's the kind of stuff that's happening. It's this closed loop recycling. It's a Bill Gates thing. It's yeah. a Bill. It's a. But it's it's uh, it's done great things for, for Orange County. So that's that's the kind of so stuff Orange that's happening. Orange County has this, and so what yeah. it basically means is everything going through the sewage system gets reclaimed. You got it. So yep. if there was a 50-year drought, if they once they get water in their system, even if they bust it in yeah. or carted it in or yeah. trucked it in, they would be self-sufficient. It's a closed loop. That's right. So you've, as long as you, your population doesn't expand you've, and people wow. use it efficiently, you, you've got water for everyone. That would take the need away for all this rain and water import it or a totally lot of it. It totally would. I think that That's amazing. you don't want to be using that to sprinkle your lawn or for your garden because it's very expensive. Mm. But as far as household use, doing your cleaning and light industrial use, it's fine. Is it going to be yeah. eventually like houses are going to have their own like mini version of this where, because now we're seeing that, that would be with awesome. solar because you yeah. have solar panels plus the Tesla battery pack. Yeah. It means you can be completely off the grid and that is freaking out the they don't uh, like that. The electricity complex is freaked. Yeah. Is that going to happen with water where I could be like, I'm going to put up three buckets, I'm going to clean <laughs> it, I'm going to have my own little mini system for cleaning. It's awesome. And like, be off the grid. The SFPUC building here is a living building. They have that. It's really? All, it's a living building. All Everything is closed loop. The thing is, is that water, if it's dirty, is a very direct threat to public health. Of course. <laughs> That's what we so, started with putting in the pipes in the first place. Yeah. So you can't, you can't, you can't just have your like at home little science kit, you know, no. and try and figure out what's going on with the water. So we're a little bit further off because it, 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 it the, the risks level associated with doing it wrong are, are pretty high. Why are the toilets set up to the same systems as the drinking water? Because it's old. It's just because it's so Cause old. If we had the gray water from, I think it's called gray water from, yeah. well, the rainwater is, is rainwater safe to drink straight or it doesn't have fluoride in it? It doesn't go through a deep a bacterial process. So your buckets. You live in LA. I wouldn't want to drink that rainwater. The, the rainwater, no way. Just because it's coming through that. Fog, dirt, dirty, dirty smog. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I live here now, but anyway, I did. But if you had those buckets, those buckets could do your lawn. Yeah. And they could do your toilet system, but you'd have to re plumb everything. Have you ever been to places that use reclaim water for to for gray water for toilets? It's really no. funny. They have a little sign above it that says, Don't drink from, don't the, drink toilet. from the toilet. <laughs> kind of implied. <laughs> kind of feels so, like you would know that. But it's happening. So, you, there are places that have that. Really? Mm -hmm. And why do urinals? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't finish the sentence, but you know where I'm going with this. Okay, I don't know, though, because I don't use urinals. Yeah, I, I'm not asking you about the function of urinals okay. exactly. I don't know how to use them. Okay. But I've always wondered this. Why do urinals need to have a flush and to flush them? Because yeah. it seems ridiculous to me that after, you know, 15 ounces of pee and flush. urine goes in there, you have to flush I a gallon of water. It's going down the pipe anyway. I've, but have you? It makes heard, no sense. I've heard at, at the at the university at University of North Carolina, one of the buildings had waterless urinals put yes. in, and, and it, there were so many complaints. The smell. Yeah, people just uh, said it was disgusting, so they had they had be. to replace them. Really? But there are like low flow versions of urinals uh, coming out. But so I've heard the that they they were really gross. There's in, this whole like yik. Yuck factor, yuck factor you have to deal with, you know? You do. Yeah. In fairness, those guys were eating a lot of asparagus on campus, so it was really <laughs> screwing up the, the smell of the urine. I feel like we've figured out a lot of stuff in this talk, Jason. I feel like we got yeah. there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, it, it's sort of like when the conversation gets to <laughs> urination and the smell of asparagus in your pee, you're kind of done, yeah. right? It's like all water conversations end with that. Absolutely. It's like Goodwin's Law. Um, all right, listen, you got to get to the airport, and I this is fascinating. Christine Boyle, thank you for taking this on. I always talk about entrepreneurs on yeah. the program doing important things. Well, you're doing it. Yeah. And for that, I salute you. This thank is you. very inspiring to me that you would take this on of all the things. And it's also very inspiring to me that somebody who was in this like whole nerd pursuit didn't go to work for these goddamn, you know, nah, other I... things and started a company. Because you would ne if you went to work for one of these people, you would never have gotten this done. Absolutely, this is I this is not you. for the the faint of heart. This is this is serious stuff, and we're pushing forward innovation in a green field that hasn't had a lot. So, um, I'm mm. you know we're the right team to 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 muster down and, and get this get this done. You hiring? We are hiring. We just we just closed on an engineer yesterday, which was Congrats. super exciting. All right, listen, um, yeah. everybody knows the first name at valorwater.com probably goes to Christine. That's usually how it works at startups. If you're a brilliant engineer, 
please go work for Valor Water and do something with your life besides optimize Facebook's ad network to be .0001 bips better at getting us to click on stupid ads. There's things you can do in life with that developer degree and all this technology that means something. You know, clean water is one of them, saving the clean water. All right. Um, thank you, Christine, and uh, continued success. We'll see you next time. We used to play pretend, wake up, you need the money. Used to play pretend, used to play pretend.